And in today's verse, we find that the older Brahmin, he hesitated. He knew what was going to happen. But finally, he understood, I have to keep my promise. I have to. I not only promise to a Vaishnava, I promise before God. So he told his family his plan. They were outraged, really outraged. How could you do this? This is nonsense. What right do you have to give my sister? And the wife was saying, my daughter, she's my daughter, too. What right without consulting us? This will destroy the aristocracy of our family, giving our daughter to a low-class Brahmin family? Never. And they were so disturbed that they told him, if you do this, everyone in your family is going to drink poison and commit suicide. We would rather die than be disgraced. Dishonor worse than death. Now what is the father supposed to do? His wife's going to commit suicide. His son's going to commit suicide. So he has to either lie to Krishna If he doesn't, he'll lose his family. And they were really, really forceful, especially his son. He was saying, you don't, you're such a pious person, you're such a religious man, you don't want to lie to Krishna, you don't have to lie. I'll, I'll take care of it. You just say you don't remember what happened. So this is what happened. So what's about to take place, because I'm not going to be here next week when you continue the story, <laughs> is after a long time, the young Brahmin comes and says to the older Brahmin, you know, I don't, he didn't care about the marriage. He wanted to protect the older Brahmin from falling down, because telling a lie is a fall down. Truthfulness is a very sacred part of devotion. We shouldn't take it for granted. And this just happened 500 years ago. This is not something that happened you know, 5,000 years ago, where we may think, well, truthfulness was important then, but now it's not so important. It's always important. We lose Krishna's mercy if we're not honest especially if we lie to a devotee. And factually, Krishna is always the witness to anything we say, whether we say it in front of the deity or not. Ishvara Sarva Bhutanam Hridde Sherjana is a deity within our heart. The deity of Gopal is sitting within our heart and he hears everything we say. So the young Brahman understood this will be the ruination of my friend's life if he doesn't give his daughter to me because it will mean he has told a lie. So to he menially served by bringing water for baths, by bringing wood and making fires to keep the old Brahmin warmed, by by begging food or preparing food for him, he massaging him when he walked long distances. He selflessly served. And now he wanted to serve him by protecting the integrity of his relationship with Krishna. So he came and said, why are you not saying anything? You <clears throat> promised. And the old man said, I don't remember. And then the son started chastising this boy who saved his father's life, who wanted nothing in return. He went out and started telling the townspeople that this person, this young boy, he is a crook, he is a criminal, he is a nonsense. 
He was traveling with my father and giving him intoxicating things that were putting him in a bad state of mind only because he wanted to rob him. He wanted to exploit him. And now look at this. After exploiting my father in so many ways, this scoundrel, this rascal, this demon is now coming and saying that my father made a promise to give my daughter in marriage. And he was very, very convincing. And he was spreading these horrible lies and trying to uh, totally assassinate the character of this young Brahmin who wanted nothing more than to selflessly serve with love and devotion. But that's the way the world is. People with ulterior motives are willing to say anything. And this poor young Brahmin, he could have just said, I didn't want this, I don't want to be married in your crazy family anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Having a brother-in-law like you and a mother-in-law like you, no way. <laughs> I can do much better than this. He could have said that. He had no attachment. He never even saw the girl before. <laughs> but out of his love for this devotee, he wanted to protect him. So he said no. He said he made the promise in front of the Gopal was our witness. And the son of the old Brahmin, oh, for him, this was complete nonsense. Gopal's the witness. <laughs> said, Gopal's a deity in Vrindavan, a thousand miles away. What are we supposed to believe? The young Brahmin says, well, if I bring him here to testify, then you will all agree. And the, old, the, young, the, Brahmin, the young son said, bring him here. If he comes and he testifies, then yes, you marry my sister. It's ridiculous. A deity made of stone walking and talking. <laughs> but the young Brahmin, now please understand this reciprocation of love between Vaishnavas. He wanted nothing for himself. He just wanted to serve this older Brahmin by protecting his spiritual life, by not making him a liar just for this purpose. He walked all the way back to Brindaban, a thousand miles. Didn't take a train, didn't take a plane, didn't take a bus or a car, he walked. That was the only way. Weeks and weeks. And then he went to the Gopal temple and he explained the situation to the deity. I want to save this person's spiritual life. His integrity is at risk. Please come, please come and testify. And he was speaking to the deity with such faith in such a personal way. He wasn't speaking to the deity as some um, stone representation of God. He was seeing him as God himself. Ishvara Paramakrishna Satchit Ananda Vikra whose body is eternal, full of knowledge and full of bliss. And because he was speaking to, to the deity with so much total faith that the deity is Krishna, and he hears everything I speak personally, the Lord reciprocates with our faith and surrender. So he was talking to Krishna with such faith so Krishna spoke back. The deity spoke. Not just like some, the deity was standing like this, like this, and um, some voice came from the sky <laughs> in the thunder. No. Krishna put his flute aside and his lips moved and he looked at the Brahman and started talking. He said, how could I go there? I'm a deity. <laughs> It's 
not that he was going to put him in a box and take him, you know, ship him like we ship deities. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have such facilities. He had not. He was just a simple Brahmin. He said, how can I go there? He said, you walk. He said, deities don't walk. <laughs> and Prabhupada tells a story in such a sweet way. He said, the Brahmin so lovingly said to the deity, if you can talk, you can walk. <laughs> and Prabhupada said, and Gopal was defeated. He said, all right, I will come with you. <laughs> He said, but under the condition that you have to feed me rice every day, <laughs> and you cannot look back. If you look back and see me, wherever I am at that point, I will stop and I will not go further. But you'll know that I'm following you because you'll hear the tinkling of my ankle bells walking behind you. So the young Brahma walked all those thousand kilometers and the whole time he heard the ankle bells of Gopal behind him. Now weeks of walking. Can you imagine the feeling in his heart? He never could look back and see Krishna. And this idea of seeing a deity walking, he never got to see it. <laughs> really a temptation. You know, Krishna's walk a deity of Gopal is walking behind him. And I mean, you know, just didn't want to see it. <laughs> but he never looked back because it was Krishna's desire that he never looked back. And he was performed this severe austerity of walking all the way and walking all the way back and not even looking at Krishna the whole way just for the purpose of protecting a Vaishnava, protecting a devotee's spiritual life. And ultimately they came to Vidyanagar. And when they reached the outskirts of the, the town, The young Brahmin looked back, and there was Gopal. <laughs> he stood, didn't move. Then he went and he called all the townspeople. He said, Gopal came, just like I told you he would come. What? Everybody was astonished. Gopal came. They all went, and there was Gopal. And on the request of the young Brahmin, he testified. that yes, the old Brahmin gave his promise. At that point, everyone was converted. <laughs> <laughs> and the marriage took place. <clears throat> and the old, and the young Brahmin and the old Brahmin's wife, after they were married, they spent the rest of their lives serving Gopal together with unconditional, unmotivated, pure love. That was all. They didn't need anything else. The highest love is when Krishna's, when we're serving Krishna together without selfish motivation. So why is this story about a marriage so interesting to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who had just taken sannyas? Yes, usually when you just take sannyas, you don't want to hear stories about people getting married. <laughs> <laughs> he just left his wife, he just left his mother, he just broke his whole marriage in order to become a renunciate, and Nityananda is telling him about a marriage. It's not about a marriage. It's about the pure, intimate love between devotees. 